Morning everyone, um, hope you had a good weekend, uh, it's been nice and sunny here in Melbourne. Uh, yeah, so we're going to continue on with our video series. Uh, so what we've done up to now is we've st installed all the prerequisites for AX. We've installed SharePoint, we've also installed the databases now. Um, so those are the two databases for AX. So we've got the database that will hold all the transactional and master data. Then we've got the other database, which is the uh, the model store database, which will hold, hold the code base. So if we actually open the server, we log in and we go into SQL Server Management Studio, we can actually go in and see that all those um, all of those database tables have been created. So let's just go in and I can show you guys that. So if we connect on here, Again, apologies for the small screen size. Databases. Uh, let's expand that. And there we go. So that's all of our transactional data and master data. And that's all of our code. Baseline is used for uh, a data, um, an upgrade. So if you're upgrading from 2009 to 2012, you'd use a baseline. If this is just a plain install like we're using, we don't need to worry too much about baseline. So we can actually expand these and just see some examples of the tables. Uh, oh, nothing's been created. That's interesting. Um, anyway, it still should still should be fine. Um, unless it's because it hasn't been synchronized. No, there's all the tables for the model store. And I think when we synchronize the tables during the install, it will create the actual transactional and master data uh, tables. Okay, so at least we know they're created and we did get the successful message in the previous video, so we're good to go. So what we can do now is we can open our extracted AX 2012 installation media, media sorry, and uh, we can proceed to install the AOS as well as the client. Uh, so the AOS is the server. So what it is, is it's a Windows service. Um, I think it's based on WCF, Windows Communication Framework. I believe that's correct. And what it does is that AOS takes calls from the client and then uh, communicates with the database, does the business logic, all of the kind of intermediary steps. So if we go install Microsoft Dynamics AX components, we'll open up this. We just go next. We're going to accept all the license in terms. Okay, and there is hotfixes. So let's just install that. And this might be, I think, in the previous uh, episode when I uh, up. Uh, extracted CU12 into the updates folder. I just extracted into the base folder. So what I've done is I've actually just made a CU12 folder there. Um, I don't know if it's 100% necessary, but um, I prefer not to take a chance. So in the previous ways that it's worked, I've always just had subfolders with the cumulative updates. So good idea to do that. That way, if you get CU13 comes out, there's not a mass confusion. So good step to take. So I'm going to add or modify components and I'm going to choose application object server and the client. Cool. So that's all we need for now. Look, I mean, obviously there's a whole bunch of other stuff here that we can install um, and we'll get through to actually all of those um, during the course of this uh, tutorial series. But just to get AX up and running, we want to go through a kind of very sequential logical step and that's why we're just doing the AOS and the client for now. Uh, it's going to do a whole bunch of prereqs uh, and it's going to, there's a few things I'm missing here, right? So for these ones here with the configure tick marks, these are always the easy ones to fix. Uh, you just tick them and then you click configure and Microsoft will then, well, the installer will then go onto uh, the web It'll download them and install them, uh, and yeah, and then the, uh, that'll clear those prereqs. The ones that don't have a configure button, those you're gonna actually have to go into a web browser and download the package and install it. So let's see how we're tracking here. Sorry, the system's a bit slow this morning. Not sure why. Oh. 
There we go. Okay, so let's install those. If I close that, it should do a revaluation, and now we can actually see it's just the Microsoft ch uh, chart controls and the Microsoft viewer. It does give you a link, so if we click this link, it'll open it up. As you can see, I'm using Chrome, and that's because if you're using Internet Explorer, you'd have a few issues uh, with the download of this package. Um, just because Internet Explorer is, it's, it, it locks down all the security, so downloading things as we went through in the previous video. Um, so we're just going to download MS Chart. Cool. We'll wait for that to come through, nice and quick, and we'll install it. We've read that. We're very happy with the license terms, and we'll go next. Cool, all done. Now what we need is, we need just that last component, which is report view. Uh, so let me click the link. This one sometimes gives you issues, so I think it's actually pretty good that uh, we go through it together so you can see. So this one, you're gonna download it, and as soon as you try and install it, it's gonna give you a funky little error. So let's see if I'm correct. So, there's our error. Setup is missing an installation prerequisite. Microsoft System CLR types for SQL Server 2012. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to type in here CLR types SQL Server 2012. No, sorry. Uh, come on. System is not being very good to me today. Uh, SQL Server 2012. CLR types. Uh, now it's going to be feature pack. Um, so that is correct. Cool. Now, if you click download, it will give you a whole heap of stuff that you can download. Um, so if you look over here and you go through this list, There'll be two CLRs. Uh, there should be a 64-bit um, and a 32-bit. Let's just check here. Um, there's the 64 SQL uh, CLR. SQL sys CLR types and it's 64. So I'm going to try that one. I know I've ran into problems sometimes where you've had mismatches between 64 and 32 bit, but I believe 64 bit should be grand. Well, let's test it, right? If it fails and we know I'm wrong. So, I'm going to download that. Yeah, Microsoft. Be nice and slow. There we go. Cool. So we're back up and running. Um, okay. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure why. So, like I said in that previous mess. Yeah, okay. So we're up. So let's install this. CLR types, yeah. And we're gonna accept the license terms. Yep, yeah. and we're gonna install. There we go, okay. So now, theoretically, that report viewer, Microsoft Report Viewer 2012, should work. So we downloaded it to yeah, we're just going to finish that failed installation and then reopen the original file we downloaded. So let's go to downloads and double click report viewer. Okay. And there we go. So it works now. Let 
and finish that off. Go back in here. So now we're going to just go back to the AOS and client installation and we're just going to revalidate. So it won't actually allow you to pass to carry on if these prerequisites fail, which sometimes can be a little frustrating because, um, yeah, well, you'll see later. Okay, so these warning messages we don't care too much about. Um, let's just carry on. So next. That's the name of my server. I'm going to choose the It automatically chooses the database name because it finds it chooses the baseline name and you see so if we we're doing an upgrade over here we'd register these databases so since we're not doing an update upgrade um, we're just going to leave it blank and click next cool we're going to leave these as default um, if you start changing these which sometimes you need to in a production environment um, it starts add in a lot of complexity. What happens then is anytime you do any configuration, any installation or further services, um, you're gonna have to always just remember what those ports are. So for a single server, it's it, it's absolutely fine to leave them as, as what they are. Indeed, it's recommended, so that way you, you, you kind of minimize the complexity of future components. Okay. So remember I created all those service accounts in one of the previous messages. I'll just do a quick recap. An Active Directory, Users and Groups. I created an AOS account. I created a, a Business Connector account and a Management Reporter account under AX Service Accounts. So these are now gonna start being utilized. So I'm gonna choose my domain, which is Kudu, and I'm gonna choose the AOS account. I've set up that password as an administrative password. So all of those service accounts has the same password. So I'm going to enter that there. I'm going to go next. And then I'm going to choose, well, I'm currently in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, so I'm going to choose English, Australia. Uh, and what this means is if you choose the country from where you're installing it from, there will be localized uh, language files. Um, so what that means is if something is referred to by a particular term in your country, AX will use that term. Uh, so for example, in Australia versus United States, certain uh, financial terms are different. Um, so whereas uh, GST is utilized, or let, let, let's use an example of the United Kingdom versus Australia. So the United Kingdom uses something called VAT, V-A-T, whereas Australia uses a it's, it's almost the exact same thing, um, but they call it GST. Um, so if I chose language Australia, yeah, every time I see reference to VAT, it would be called GST. Whereas if I chose the United Kingdom, yeah, it would be represented uh, by a language file that said VAT. So um, good to know. Um, so yeah, also installation type, we're going to use it as administrator. Uh, and that's because I want to access the back end, like the Morphix development environment and all the fancy features. And I'm going to create a desktop shortcut and I'm going to go next. It's going to then look at a few more prereqs. It looks like we're all good with the prereqs except for uh, Microsoft Analysis Management Objects. So let's go download that quick. Okay. So if we're just going to pause that, oh, okay. So there you go, it's come up. Yeah, sorry about the speed in this video. I mean, it was absolutely fine in the previous videos, but for some reason, it almost seems like the latency is quite high today. Um, so yeah, let me see if I can resolve that before I go into the next video. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to pause it quickly while I try to resolve that. Okay, um, yeah, I, I think it's, I've got a new VPN uh, that I've been using and I think it might be causing an issue. So let's push on through. Um, I, I'll resolve it offline and, and hopefully it won't affect any of the future videos. So we're just going to install that quickly. So accept the license terms. Yeah, I mean, you could put your name in here. I don't. I couldn't really be bothered. And there we go. 
Cool. So that's all installed now. Close this over here. Wait for it to very slowly close and now revalidate. Cool. So we're good to go. Let's click next. Okay. It's picked up all the hotfixes. That's part of the CU12. Okay. So those are the binary updates that it's going to apply. And now we're going to install. So we click install. Okay. Now this is going to take a fair bit of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, pause it. And then as soon as it's finished, I'll come back and resume the video. Um, actually, to be fair, from this is pretty much it, right? So this is the installation. If it fails, you're going to have to debug. And you'd probably need to just ask some questions in the comments. And I'll, I'll reply to, to them and help you if, you if you find any problems. But, I mean, I think this is good enough for this video. This is pretty much how to install it. If we've made it this far, it's very rare that the installation would fail. So... I think, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you want to see how to then go through the next steps, join in the next video. If you want to subscribe and do all of that stuff, yeah, work away. Up to you. But um, I think that's good for this episode. Um, so, yeah, if you have any problems, let me know in the comments. Good luck.